We're in Yakima, Washington at Frank and Jesse's place where we bought this thing and where they have stored it for us for like seven months. This is a 1967 Jeep Wagoneer and the strange thing about it is that it's got the Buick 350 engine in it, which actually didn't come out till 1968. The other weird thing is that it's a three on the tree, which you do not expect with a Buick 350. Let me tell you our plans for it and also a little bit about Wagoneers. As far as plans, we just gotta make it run, drive, and stop. It's got no brakes whatsoever right now. These things ran from 1963 all the way to 1991, a huge range of cars that came with the exact same sheet metal. Also, the Wagoneer is credited as being the very first SUV. Now, the thing is, before 1963, you already had the Suburban, the Toyota Land Cruiser, the Willys Wagon, but this one was marketed to families as a comfortable station wagon that had four-wheel drive. So ostensibly the first SUV. I gotta tell you about the engines that were available in these things because the names of them are so wicked. The very first one was the Tornado inline six, and it was the very first overhead cam engine manufactured in the United States. Next up, we had the Rambler Vigilante 327, and then the Dauntless Buick V8. And after that, I think they went to the AMC engines, which ran from 1972 all the way to the end of production in 1991. More than you needed to know about this thing. We're gonna dig in, start wrenching on it, and hopefully hit the road. Steve, it is love at second sight. At second sight? <laughs> yeah, there's an episode of Roadkill where Finnegan and I came and it was this deep in snow. Yeah. Snow all on the roof and snow on the hood and everything like that. Well, I trump your experience because it's love at first sight for me. Really? Yeah, look you at like this it? thing. No, they were so far ahead of their time that there was nothing else like it back when they came out. So the guy claims that it runs and drives with Perfect. the Buick and the three on the tree, but he says it has no brakes and the radiator's junk. Well, I mean, can I feast my eyes on your Buick? Yeah, let's check it out. Yeah. There we go. Look, it's so original. It's got the Jeep water bag on it. Wow. Look how big this radiator is. It's way better than the flimsy one that I got. I think we're in trouble on overheating. What's wrong with the radiator? I don't know, we'll find out. He claims it leaks. Yeah, well, we could solder it. Yeah. Does it have the good early metal heater box? It does. Well, would you expect plastic? No, I wouldn't accept it if it was. That's no a later way. model one. What is this? Transistorized voltage regulator. Standard motor products. Also cool. That's an upgrade. This thing is sort of original. Yeah, it's pretty good. We're gonna ruin this Wagoneer. Oh yeah, for sure. Look, it's got dual hood release catches. Oh yeah, that's the way they are. You unaware? No. You've never had an FSJ? I'm, I'm a neophyte on these things. <laughs> the full-size Jeep, FSJ, it's a thing. <clears throat> Look at the color. This is the ultimate Wagoneer color. I really like the color. I have not seen the full inside part of it. Oh, nice. I mean, look at that gauge layout. You really have modern cars that just can't hold a candle to something like that. When I was shopping for the Wagoneer, I had to have the early dash. I wouldn't accept the later AMC plastic dash, so this is perfect. This has the closest thing to a headliner of any vehicle I own. Very nice. I really want to hit the road ASAP. Well, I mean, for me, a, an opportunity to ride in the Wagoneer makes me motivated to get it going. Yeah, so let's hurry up. Let's push it inside and see what we can do. Uh, Might need minute. gloves. Ah, uh, push it really? Yeah. That's a lot of work. This thing probably weighs a ton. Probably. Can we get all the crew guys to push it off camera while we sit and lounge in the shop? That's a good call. Yeah, I think we should do that. Yeah. What do you want to do first? Well, you know more about the car than I do, like specifically what's wrong with it. <laughs> Radiator and brakes is kind of what I've been hearing. Yeah. In general, I say we make it run because if it doesn't run, oh, then yeah. game uh, over. Yeah. Yeah, the whole thing is over at that point. Okay. Yeah, and then we go buy another vehicle from their backyard and do something else. <laughs> that crystalline Freiburger logic, I like it. Yeah. Ooh, look, it says Dauntless right on it. Yeah. Yes. That's really good. Yeah, I like the Dauntless. We need battery to begin with, and then okay. maybe we'll see if it'll get gas, and we'll turn the key and see what happens. Oh, should we check oil this time? Well, you gotta presume it's got oil in it, right? I usually do. Yeah. Let's see. Oh, two barrel. What did you expect? Quadrajet? 
Nah, not happening. No. Okay, battery. Is it gonna fire right up? I don't know. Oh, it will. Okay, David. Oh, come on. It just clicked, didn't start. He's gonna check the cables. Sometimes you can just give him a twist. Try it again. Ready? Yep. Oh, I need a battery post-terminal cleaning tool. Look at the cool Jeep logo on the speaker. And this, look at that badge. Dude. What I have here is the battery post-terminal tool, but the problem is once you use them once, the wire brush reduces in diameter and it will no longer function as intended. So, substitute the BFH. I don't know what that stands for, but it has something to do with the hammer. Okay, David, start the engine. Okay. Whoa! What? He started the engine. It fired up immediately. That's crazy. I was just kidding. Uh-oh. Is there fuel in the filter? Oh, it's pumping. Yeah? It's pumping air. I don't think there's any fuel in the tank, because it's bubbling air up into the filter. Ah. I need you to open the gas cap, and then I'll take it from there. To me, it looks like that master cylinder is brand new. Brand new in 1985? Well, that's brand new, isn't it? <laughs> Try it. Let's see if there's goop in it. It's empty. How's the goop? Looks pretty clean. Here. What if I take my phone and light it? And take a picture and then hand the, pass it. That's how you would do it if you were a millennial, right? Yeah, you would Oh, you've got a phone. Go straight to the phone. Go right here. What? How am I totally missing? Because you're using the wrong side of the camera. Oh, that's... <laughs> <laughs> Boomer! <laughs> Oh, brother, that's way better. I'm gonna have to flash it. Just so you know, that was Steve and I last night. Just in case you think that we don't have fun on our shoots. We always have fun on our shoots. How do you make it just flash no matter what? You just push the button. I see that. Ready? Yep. Huh, imagine that, it flashed. <laughs> it's got some sludge, but the holes seem open. That looks like water or dirt. Here, wipe your finger in the back half. How about if I just get a rag and sop it all that stuff up? Okay. Where the broken bolt in the water pump housing was preventing our alternator bracket from bolting in place, we had come up with a field repair of using vice grips, but we are in the shop, so we're going with the shop repair of drilling it out and tapping it for a fastener. And we've drilled it already with a 13 64 bit, and we're gonna use a quarter 20 tap to cut new threads and fix this the way it needs to be fixed correctly. And it'll go together just like factory. Before the fan goes on, fuel filter, just because we can. And I think it needs one. Steve argued with me, but I'm doing it anyway. Next, we need to go underneath the thing and replace a bad fuel hose, which is affecting the fuel delivery. Are you wearing sandals or shoes? Shoes. It would have been funnier if you let the gas drip on your bare feet. Yeah, it would have been. I thought to check the front end also, and it was empty. That does not bode well for the rest of the vehicle. That took a lot of fluid. It did. It was low. Yeah. That was way low. Okay. Did you tighten the transfer case one? Yes. Whoa! a boy. Should we go all out and change the engine oil? Well, of course. OK. Do we have a filter? Yeah. That oil doesn't look too bad. The oil's already drained. So I'm going to take the filter off and not use nothing but my bare hands to do that. It's hot. It's tight, but I've got it. I'd say it's been 
35,000 miles since the last oil change. All right, I think that's good. A little more for luck. Let's go. You didn't think we were gonna leave without our hubcaps, did you? This is almost the best part. Steve, I'm gonna snap these on and we're out of here. There we go. That is on. Ah, hit it harder. So use, it dents? Use the Bruce Lee one inch punch. There we go. There you go. Hubcaps on. We're out of here. We'll be back in five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> See you soon. Oh. 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 You heard the oh. telltale sign. The telltale sound of a hubcap <laughs> rolling off. It was exactly like, like a, a 70s movie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was bullet all over again. Let me find it. Oh, man. The hubcap rolled off and fell in the swamp. David's going to retrieve that like a dog getting a bone. There was a tadpole in it, Steve. Oh, no. Steve, no. It had a tadpole in it. Oh. Yuck. OK, let's see if I can get this on better this time. Ah, I dented it. The hub holds it from going on all the way. OK, it's not having that hubcap. No hubcap, Steve. I don't want to lose it. Okay. It's non-functional, but I don't want to lose it. I dented it. It was a good try. I know. Man, this thing's got some acceleration. It's a Buick 350, man. I know. Man, this thing drives good. Yeah, it does. The whole vehicle is flawless. It's like a glass house. The visibility out of the Wagoneer is unmatched. Yeah, I can't believe how smooth the ride is, too. And it's running cool as a cuke. Wow. It's really like a four-wheel drive Cadillac. I can't find flaw with the Wagoneer just yet. Not yet, no. Now that we got the Wagoneer running and driving and we're like super happy with it, we're heading to this junkyard that those guys told us about. Maybe we can find another vehicle to rescue. Junkyard rescues might become a thing, Fryberger. Uh-oh. Is that, that a hubcap? No, that was the mirror glass falling out of oh. the mirror. What? Yeah. Oh. Does that mean we're going to have seven years bad luck? Yes. <laughs> <laughs>